Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Plain Strains of Comic Book Channel. My name is Matt, and today we're going to review Until My Knuckles Bleed number one. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, commenting, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's get straight into this one. All right, we got the cover here for Until My Knuckles Bleed number one. This is a behemoth comic, which I haven't read much of, and it is by Victor Santos. So we start off in the 90s, which is always a great place to start. We see there was a super team in the 90s that looks a lot like a Rob Liefeld Youngblood team or something. We get to see how much fun these 90s superheroes had, beating people up, punching, having romances between the group members. And then we cut to today. It's Detroit, and we see the life of a, an older superhero isn't exactly as exciting. So this is the main character named Gavin. He was a hero called the Damager back in the day, but now he works as a strip club bouncer. And he's good at his job. All the ladies like him. He protects them, and he's nice to them. He keeps the creeps away as needed and treats everybody with respect. So after the shift is over, we see Gavin here talking to his boss about getting a raise. His boss is, is Russian of some kind. This club is maybe run by the mob or some organization. And he's basically told by his manager that we can't give you a raise. Even though I wanted to, the upper management said you can't have a raise. When he comes out, he's definitely in a bad mood, and he sees this drunk guy dancing with one of the girls. This guy's a total jerk. When he gets pulled off the stage by Gavin, the guy, like, recognizes him, and then is like, oh, you're a fucking loser, and, like, throws money in his face. He meets his ex-wife for breakfast in the morning because he worked all night. They have a strained relationship, as you could imagine. He pays for a lot of her stuff, like, specifically her streaming services and things like that. And then after they have breakfast, they go have sex, which he says the shared grief of being a soldier and a hero is a hard link to break. And this is one of the coolest pages in this book. They show him without his shirt on and we get to see like what he his uh, power set was. And basically he was like Iron Man, but with suit technology that actually integrated into his body. So he has all these plug marks, kind of like the Matrix or something, where these electrodes plugged into his body. Because of that, he's in constant pain from having used the suit. So later on, he goes to drink with some friends. We see this bar is actually an ex-superhero bar. He says it's the only place they can call each other by their old code names. But the problem is everybody here is feeling the effects of being a superhero, just like we saw him feeling earlier. There's an old hero named Bloodspur. He has degenerative osteoporosis and vascular surgery pending. His body's all frail. There's another guy named Deathwisher who has diabetes and has had three hip operations. But this is the place where they can all kind of hang out and remember the old times. So in this world, it seems that when you stop being a hero, you kind of hand in your equipment to the government so that no one else can get that technology and you can't sell it on the black market. There's an FBI agent going around who was a hero at one time, and she's seeing if anyone here has any unregistered equipment or things they should turn in. And it seems like she's working a case where some superhero technology was used, and she's trying to figure out where that has come from. And I'm going to stop her right here. I don't want to spoil anything else. But I had a real good time reading this comic. It was really fun. It's not like fully original. There's definitely things that remind me of other comics in it. There's definitely a lot of Sin City influence in this, just in like the art and the design of the main character. And it's actually kind of like a more adult version of The Incredibles, but this is a more like gritty down to earth interpretation of that. And I thought it was really fun. Now the writer and the artist are both the same guy. The writing was pretty much spot on. And obviously I liked the art a lot. It was very well done. And uh, just the story overall, the plot of it flowed really well. And I'm very interested to read more to see what happens. So I'm going to give this one a four out of five stars. I highly recommend checking this one out. And if you saw something you like, definitely go pick it up at your local comic book store. And we'll see you guys on the next one.